oh, hello. Obviously, I'm not home right now. I'm in, I'm in Vegas enjoying myself. So there, there's no live podcast this week. But we pre-recorded it, and I did it with Wood from that YouTube channel that everybody confuses me with. We had a nice long chat about YouTube, work on YouTube. We did a long time about sponsorships. So if you're interested in that, you're going to be interested in this. We also talked a very little bit towards the end about uh, our predictions for what Nintendo might have at this year's E3. We also talked about TikTok and that impact on YouTube. There, there's a lot of different topics we go through. Uh, there should be timestamps at the bottom if you want to just scroll through. Maybe you're just interested in the Nintendo stuff. Maybe you do want to hear us talk about all of the, the, the wacky sponsorships we've turned down and, 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 uh, and the trouble we're going to get in with our, with our management company. So anyway, thank you all for being here. We'll see you next week for the regular scheduled podcast. It'll be recorded the day the Nintendo Direct comes out, so that'll be a fun time, and I'm going to be over here enjoying myself, and I hope you enjoy yourself too. Have a good week. Oh, baby mama, look at us. Look at, look at how far we've come. Wow. Oh, boy, howdy. How you doing? Wood? Hi. How are you? What do you mean how far we've come? I don't know. I always just, just go off in the beginning. Mm, I'm how excited. You, how are you? Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, everybody. And I'm especially so Wood. glad to be here. Wow. I'm, like, I'm, looking, I'm looking into a mirror. Oh, my Delayed God. Mirror. Wow. We're so... You were just so confused about how... I'm still really confused. I don't and understand. It's me out. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter. You are... Pumped. No, it, it does. doesn't matter. No, it does. Mm -hmm. You think you think that you're delayed. I don't think I'm delayed. I I understand that this is coming through perfectly for everyone watching at home. Yes. I just don't get why you are sharing your screen with me. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I should see the screen shared perfectly, and yet there is a big delay on me and there's no delay on you. It's because you're hearing yourself in real life. But if I'm to Texas. believe that but it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. I, I don't I, I'm If coming, you were delayed as well. I'm watching you through cyberspace and it's you're perfectly in sync to everybody at home. So you're sending my video back to me. Yes. And, and, and because you're hearing yourself in real life and seeing it bounce to New York and back to Texas, it's a little delay. If you muted yourself in your, well, no, you can't mute yourself. It's just you trippy your because, <laughs> it's just trippy because I've never seen I've never, never mind. Don't worry. I understand. Just get on with it. This People is, are going to think I'm an idiot. You don't understand. <laughs> this is how the podcast works. We don't okay, have, good. we just, we, we go off for like 10 minutes and then we finally get into the topic. What yeah. is the topic? We're going to talk about like E3 predictions, but that's really kind of like a loose topic. I really mm. just wanted to hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Okay, great. <laughs> no. You're right over there. So... <clears throat> Kim makes fun of me about this all the time, but like my pipes are wrong. Excuse like me. my food hole and my water hole, <laughs> they're like merged into like one hole. And what? my body has a really hard time swallowing and not getting it in the food hole. And I swear there's like a one in five chance every time I drink something that it goes down the wrong hole. Wait, it's how do you know that? Experience. <laughs> Because literally, I choke on my beverages and my water all the time. Sometimes my own spit. Like, oh. like legit, like, it's more often hot. than not, I'll be sat there, and then all of a sudden, I'm just like... <laughs> and Kim's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? I, yeah, I just swallowed my spit wrong. Can you burp? Like, yes. if you wanted to? Well, I can't. No, not on, not on cue, I can't. Well, like, if you eat too much, like, can you burp it out? Oh, I can burp, period, yes. Okay. I can't. I can't. I you can't the, burp? I'm incapable of burping. Apparently, that's what? a thing. You just it's like internally a implode? Yeah, I, I fart it out. It eventually turns into a fart. But <laughs> oh, it takes a while okay. to get there. As, as, I basically just get massive somehow. heartburn until that sucks. it comes out as a fart or a poop. I had heartburn for the first time recently and thought I was dying. It's pretty bad. It was for really painful. For the first time? Yeah. What, my what body you... is like a machine. The only thing wrong with my body is my pipes. Everything else <laughs> runs like clockwork. I poop two times a day, morning and night. I do. I do one. Nice, solid consistency. I it's do want it to great. struggle every time. <laughs> Ooh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> um, so people wanted us to talk about E3 predictions. Uh, I guess specifically for Nintendo. Um, okay. 
this week well this is gonna go out probably on tuesday uh we're recording this on friday oh my yeah. podcast goes out on tuesdays that's <laughs> why uh you're here now pre-recorded because uh you do your podcast at the exact same time as we do our yeah, podcast. actually that you got mad at me about that <laughs> yeah well of all of the times I didn't I plan do on the that podcast at all. once a week, and you happen to do uh, it at the exact same time. Exact like same day and time. Yes. But our podcasts are completely different. Mine, are, mine yes. isn't about gaming at all. Unless you're interested in watching my podcast and you thought it was about gaming, in which case, oh, every day, every time. <laughs> um, uh, but no, I feel like the crossover isn't there, other than, you know, you and I having very similar audiences. Every time I see your videos pop up in my feed and I hover over it, it comes up with beat em ups viewers also watch this. I'm like, yeah, of course yes, they do. That, that happens to me too with yours. I was just going to say, uh, on Twitch, on like the, was it Insights tab? Um, mm -hmm. It tells you, uh, you know, I can pull it up right now. Um, which channels have viewers <laughs> in common with mine? And you are number one, 21%. Oh my God. Where do I find that? Uh, go to channel insights. Oh, wait, channel that's on analytics. Twitch even. I Twitch, didn't know you could yeah. get on Twitch. And then it goes sc oh. <laughs> Scootish, Fanatics 4, Spawn Wave, and then Misclick. I was going to say because on YouTube, we absolutely, like, yeah. that is still the same case. Yeah, there Hold is a on. place insights, to see that on, on channel YouTube, analytics. <clears throat> uh, um, I, I don't see it. I just see, like, Scroll. average viewers and stuff oh oh, 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 oh yeah it's you 21 percent <laughs> you baby it's the exact it's the exact uh it's the exact same amount yeah yeah oh wow and miss click well and 8 we, and we -click. barely stream together <laughs> no oh god we should i know wow yeah we should That'd be a good we idea. do every once it's mm -hmm. usually like a big event when we do we should make another video in fact we should do the video we were planning to do for that um mobile thing but just oh, not God. for the mobile thing do you want to talk about that you want to give the inside inside scoop yes I, i'm willing to talk about that just without the detail of what the company was <laughs> should we give figures i don't know about that because uh, well the thing is people are gonna think that it's insane but it's not like anything else like it's not that's it's, that's it's not part an, of the problem like, like know, whenever you give a figure, this is why I don't like talking money or, or numbers. I know, with, with I know, people. I know, I know, I know. Because, but it's so ridiculous. I want to. Well, not for, I'm not talking, I'm not saying this for you. I'm saying this for everybody watching at home. I don't like saying right. numbers because it's either way too much or not yeah. enough. And it's never mm -hmm. okay. It's never perfectly fine. This happens with my mom all the time. Whenever my mom's just like, how much, like, how much was that? She's, it's always too much or too, or not enough. If you want, if you want like a little clip that will blow up, we should give this juicy little nugget away because it's insane, <laughs> dude. It's insane. It was, it was we, a, okay. Yeah, go ahead. I won't say the number, but I'll tell the story. And then when we get to the end of it, we can decide if we want to tease that or not. But so it came to me first. Um, right. It was a mobile game company who I won't name. And they offered a ludicrous amount of money to review their game. And... I usually don't do, and it had to be a dedicated video too. It had to be a 10 minute video on this mobile game, nothing else on my main channel. But the gimmick was it had to be played with someone else. So immediately I was like, the only way I will do this before I even looked into the game, because I'm not going <laughs> to lie, I had dollar signs in my eyes. I was like, the only way I could do this is if Bob did it with me. So then they reached out to you well, and oh, you pause, were down. Pause. Okay, Part of the right. stipulation, wasn't it that you needed to do it with somebody? Yes, it, it yes. The, well, okay. I it don't wasn't say specifically what it is. It you were like, away. I'm roping Bob into this. It was no, like, it was it like they wanted be, an, an yeah. extra person to be involved. And they were going to try and get me in with another one that they already had planned. And I was like, no, I'm not doing it with some random. Like right. it would, if I were going to do this and make it a fun video with this game, it has to be Bob or a, a friend of mine, but like Bob was my first choice. And then I don't know what happened on your side after that, but. I think this is going to be the topic of the podcast. We're just going to talk about sponsorships. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, this one in particular was a good one yeah so um so i was i was uh, like on a little mini vacation in boston at the time oh, uh i, I had i was just checking into the hotel and my manager said yo do you want to make x amount of dollars and i was like yeah <laughs> what, what do i what do yeah. i gotta do and yeah and then he's like call me right now and i was like I'm, i like just like got here like give me give me like like an hour so 
I check in, I get to the room and everything. And uh, then I call him and we're on the phone for like a while. And he mm -hmm. told me it was a mobile game, uh, blah, blah, blah. They wanted a dedicated video. I was like, eh, I don't do dedicated videos. And he knows I don't mm -hmm. do dedicated videos. Not um, mobile games. I don't mind I've mobile done them, games. I've done them for Switch games, but not for mobile. I, I, I mean, personally, I don't mind mobile games. I like mobile games. It's just oh, that. Oh, yes, yeah, same. Uh, mobile game sponsorships are usually like like dicey. There's usually like some. Yes, there's like a raid shadow legend. Yes. <laughs> Have you done raid shadow legends? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that was before it became a meme. I did it like right when it became a meme, and yes. I didn't realize it was oh, really? like a meme. Yeah. The, when I did it. the game. The thing is, the game isn't. That, this is a different tangent. The game isn't that bad. It just became a meme because they paid way too many people to advertise that game. Yeah. I played it and I was like, this is good. And I could see my, I have a friend who plays games exactly like that. And I was like, yeah. this, this is a game that it's my not, friend would play. The, the, where they went wrong wasn't even how many people they booked. It was that they had this hardcore script you had yeah. to stick to. They wanted you to say word for word, line for line. So everyone's read was exactly the same. Like I, everyone had to react to that damn dragon. <laughs> at the start of the game like that was part of it you, they they wanted to see the dragon on the screen of the cutscene, mind you and you had to react to it like whoa that's a big dragon so everyone did that <laughs> keep <laughs> keep that dragon in mind for the rest of our story we're gonna tell <laughs> okay um, but i fought with them with raid shadow legends i fought with them for for the script because i, I they, the script is insanely yeah, I did long too. and it, yeah. it was gonna be way longer than a two minute ad read so. if you wanted to fit that in a two minute ad read you'd be like the micro machines man yeah yeah so i i had like a back and forth and yeah i, I for, for the backlash that i got not worth it never doing that again nope. normally normally i don't listen to comments normally i'm like screw you guys i'll do whatever the hell i want but for that i was like well i mean it it's content for them and they're gonna if they're gonna hate the video every time i post this it's not worth it a couple of videos i did for them before it was a meme ended up blowing up and i get comments pop up every now and then still like oh look at wood doing raid shadow legends <laughs> and i want to reply like no it was before <laughs> so anyway anyway I, back to the story i'm in the hotel room we're talking to it's out we have the same manager right i have paul yeah for um, my sponsorship yeah it's me too um is it a do you have a different manager for different things uh, Kristen's my main manager who I go to for literally everything. Paul is just my sponsorships. Oh, I only I only ever really talk to him about sponsorships. I have nothing else to talk Same. to him about. Uh, we've, we've developed a friendship. I like him a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I talk to him almost daily. Um, so yeah, I'm talking to him. He's telling me it's a mobile game. Um, and I'm like, great, awesome. He said, I had to do it with you. Um, hmm. Uh. It, well, he like, he, he oh, said well. that you you were approached about it and you picked me to do it with you and I was like awesome and he and he told me that you didn't really want to do it <laughs> well <laughs> and and I was like well if it's a dedicated video we'll take some of the budget and make like a big deal video yeah. out of it and yeah. we'll we'll try to make it a piece of content that's worth it for my channel it'll be worth it for his channel it'll be yes. worth it to the sponsor and it'll be worth it for all the viewers we'll make it like a big yes. deal and it'll be yes. fun for everybody and I'm sure I didn't even know what the game was. I was like, I'm sure mm -hmm. we can figure something out and it'll be mm -hmm. it'll be a, a happy, fun time for everybody. Um, so I said, let me call Wood and then I'll get back to you. And I call, and they wanted like a they wanted to know like instantly if we were going to yeah, take that it. day. So mm -hmm. I called you and you were like, hey, I was like, hey, Wood, did you did you hear about the thing that you're like, yeah, how much do they offer you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to know if it was the same. So. uh so we got it in well i you knew more about the game than i did i guess uh and i was yeah, I, I was like up, well it's point. i was like well we uh we, we can just we, we were on the same page kind of like let's yeah. let's make a big deal let's take some of the yeah. budget and makes and we came yeah. up with some good ideas for, for my, what we my, wanted to do. my plan was this huge because again i would never put just me playing a mobile game for 10 minutes on my channel i just couldn't i couldn't do that to my audience so my plan was what if it was bob and i's first collaboration where we meet in person and make a video so i was going to fly to new york which i thought that alone would be great for both our audiences but mine but i was going to try and make the game in real life kind of like what i just did with the mario and the go-kart i was going to try and play the game with our fans in the middle of new york and like have them be the pieces of the game and i was trying i was gonna i was going overboard man i was gonna get paid actors like i was gonna do this was a lot of money yeah. i was gonna spend most of it on the video just because i thought it'd be really cool to do it it would have been fun, and we would have still have money left over to friggin' yeah, you know, but I had pad our pockets. 
So, yeah, uh, yeah it, it, we, we had some great ideas. And uh, then I we got off the phone with you. I called our manager again. And I was like, hey, uh, we have an idea. I think it'll be good for us and them. Uh, the, the, the company wanted us to just do a, uh, a gameplay of the video. They, yeah. were, they had like pretty mm-hmm. strict guidelines and we were like yeah. I, I was like that's not gonna work we need to do something like crazy mm-hmm. um and then he wanted me to pitch it to the company and it's it's not a small mobile game company it was a very large company <laughs> yeah i was one supposed of the to, biggest arguably yeah i was supposed to pitch it to them and i said all right let me take tonight to play the game get a few more ideas and then tomorrow and then the rest is history i'll hit you and wood up and we'll see what we can do <laughs> yeah. so i went out i gambled i had a good night and then i came back mm. to the room i downloaded the game booted it up and the game was fucking garbage <laughs> <laughs> the game was trash <laughs> yeah it's really bad i i was still gonna try because my idea was so grand i was like if we could make this work i'll still go with it but you were like this game is so bad that i don't want anything to do with this and i was like okay fine and i reached back out to them and i'm like can we do any other game because they had more yeah. games I w- and some of them didn't look too bad i was like any other game and they oh, we, we never heard back just legit never heard back and so what, that went away one but, of the games that they showed as an example was a. Uh, triple a game so like like i i'll tell you later <laughs> okay um, i don't remember because the one i was shown wasn't not a triple a but it still looked fun i mean it's a, it's a triple a ip that was turned into a mobile game these um, people make fun games i yes, don't know why yes. they decided we would want this one because it was yeah. so not anything like what we would even play even that's why there was big money behind it because they knew that <laughs> nobody wanted to play the game now the question is do we talk about the big money so the game was i'm ignoring that question the the game was (laughs) uh it was kind of a raid shadow lens ripoff to the point where i wasn't even gonna say that to the point where it had the same dragon at the end of the tutorial okay all right here we go yeah i wasn't even gonna because now people might better narrow it down (laughs) i think it was a lot of raid shadow legends ripped off but raid shadow legends might have ripped them off i don't know who's ripping off no i don't I don't think so. It was definitely a clone. Yes, it even had a dragon, and honestly, it looked boring. Like if, if you can imagine Ray Shadow Legends, but if it looked boring, um, there that was, was a, that game. The, it, yeah, the animations were bad, and there was a oh, lot yeah. of IP theft in the game. There's like a yeah, lot of other weird it was stuff. weird. So, and it the the fact that a big company was behind it was really mm-hmm. weird. But I had to tell the manager who who the manager takes a cut of the ad right the, the, yeah. the thing so yeah i basically had to be like hey sorry you you none of us are getting money today <laughs> yeah we can't we yeah. can't and do it, this i guess we won't say how much it was but i mean for what i usually get paid for an ad read which i think is a modest amount and um, some people i talk to say that i undercharge um this was like uh times two times it was about times 20, I would say. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the math right now, 15, actually. What I would usually get paid. Like, the, it would have... It it would have pretty much taken care of me and Kim for, like, a good six months. Like, like it was insane. It was insane money. It was 12 or 13 times more right. than what we would yeah. normally make on an ad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yours... Yeah. yeah, yeah. For both of us, I think. So Insane. It was and so I just want to throw out there that really, really, both Bob and I, I can't speak for Bob, but I know Bob and I can <laughs> speak for Bob. Both Bob and I don't take sponsors unless it's something that we do feel passionately about. Or I don't know about you, but for me, even if I don't like necessarily this isn't for me, I feel like it's good for my audience in a way. It's a good product. It's something they can use. It's a win-win in that sense. Um, and if I get offered something even for a ludicrous amount of money, but it looks poopoo schmoopoo, <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not talking about it. And that was a free mobile game. Like, it's really no harm, no foul. I just couldn't bring myself to make a whole video about it on my channel. It, it, it's it's that, like, so I, no, I'm the, I, I won't do a sponsorship if I don't genuinely like the product or I don't think it, yeah. could, it could help people. Yeah. Um, so I... I, if we took that sponsorship, it would have devalued every sponsorship we took after yes. that. Yes, yes. So, so, and also like a lot of people call sponsors in general selling out. I right. don't. Um, you know, it's making money for what we do. That would have been selling out. 
Even if mm -hmm. it was like a one-time thing, yeah, that would have been us selling out to make a lot of money, which... Yes. Oh. Yeah, like if we have it. to sit there and be like, you should play it. this game. Like, no, you shouldn't because it's not a good game. Yeah. No, you really shouldn't. Ignore this video, but Bob and I got to have a good time. <laughs> and we bought a house after. <laughs> Every sponsorship I take, I think like you should try this out if you're interested yeah, absolutely. in coffee or yeah. friggin' cereal or whatever. Like You did Magic Spoon recently. I've done that. I love that. We've both done trade coffee. I love my Raycons. I was trying to get them to work for this podcast. They were right here <laughs> next to me. See, I, I love everything. I didn't that take I do. Raycons because I don't like wireless headphones. Yeah, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah. I like them though. See, that's, the, that's, but that's, that's how, like, much I care the about sponsorships. The thing is, though, I use them in very specific places when I work out. They're fantastic. Right. Wired headphones, when you work out, I hate it because they get like, caught and then they get yanked out of your ears. And then mid-set, you can't listen to Katy Perry. I mean, uh, Nickelback. <laughs> I mean, uh, whatever people listen to so when they work no, out anymore. these are good. <laughs> <laughs> you get it cancels for all these. Um yeah, no, I like I I don't like to screw around with my with my headphones, but that's a whole nother topic. I think I, I made a whole video on it already. Um, what are we talking about? E three sponsorships. E three, I think. No, no, okay, no. Yeah, now that. it's now we're talking about sponsorships. No, okay. <laughs> um, I I I lost it. So yeah, this was this big sponsorship would have would have been like thirteen videos worth of sponsorships if we just did one. Just, at this point, just say the number. I want to hear the I word really, come out of your mouth. I really don't want to, though. It's just like... Because now I already said it's 13 times more, so now people can extrapolate how much we make for a normal sponsorship. Which no, I don't think any, I think people get so confused with how much YouTubers make. Like, really? Like, they either think it's way more than what it is, or it's nothing. And it's not nothing. So, so It's a good amount. The, the, depending the, on who you are the price i get for sponsorships fluctuates pretty pretty wildly like it, it just yeah. recently got went up to like like a decent amount and it could go I have down a like set, tomorrow i have a sad amount i have my minimum i'm like if you mm -hmm. can't hit my minimum i don't want to hear from you because <laughs> here's my here's <laughs> that sounds weird but i last year so in november of last year i had four sponsorship companies approach me and they all said we want to book you for each month next year and I said, if you can hit my minimum for each month next year, you got it. And they all said yes. So in November of last year, I had all of this year booked one wow. sponsor every single week. Damn. It's yeah, good and it's bad that. because it doesn't really it doesn't really leave room for a lot of stuff. It doesn't like if something cool comes along, that's like I think I can't remember what it was. Oh, Ubisoft came along recently and they were like, pick any one of our games and make a video on it and we'll pay you this much. Damn. And I, I kind of wanted to do it. I was like, oh, that sounds fun. But I already had like all my other sponsors and I can't put one of those sponsors in that video. So I had to say no. So it sucks for that, but it's nice. It's almost like job security for the whole year, you know? We both like to put a little extra into our sponsored posts, right? I have, okay. Yes, <laughs> I am very jealous of you lately. You have been crushing it. I even oh, messaged you yesterday and asked how you did that self high five on the green screen. Um, because I like doing similar things, but lately because I've booked so many sponsors and because I'm trying to make videos that aren't sponsored at the same time, I don't have time to spend a whole day making like a skit for a sponsor yeah. read. So I've gotten really lazy lately and I'm, I'm just trying to get the information out and get on with the video. I, it's been really stressful lately. Uh, the last, it's a lot I, of work. The last ad I did was for Adorama. It's a camera store. Um, yeah, I saw and, it, watched it. And last night I did an, I did a stream on their Twitch doing like a like a friggin' TED talk and I How I much went, you get paid for that? Shut the fuck up. I <laughs> I um I showed on I, I opened up Premiere and I showed exactly how I did the magic spoon ad with the green screen thing and I showed how I mm -hmm. did the Adorama ad. Uh I'm hopefully I gonna watch that. Well I'm gonna I think we're gonna take that and make it into a clips video. So on youtube.com okay, slash wolf den clips, you'll be able to get a little bit of an insight on how those videos work. But the Adorama ad, I did that the day the the day before the video was going out. So uh, yeah. I was really stressing out on how, because I, I really want to put a lot into the ads so that the viewer feels like it's worth it to them to yes, watch it. Yes, yeah. So And that's the feedback I and, get when I do that. And now I have like a reputation. Now I'm like, if I, I just know. if I just read the thing, people are going to be pissed. <laughs> Dude, I went, I've gone back to reading them lately and people just don't mention the ads anymore and it's kind of disappointing. I don't think people well, get pissed. if they don't pissed. talk about it, then that's good. 
it's better yeah, than they're not than talking being bad about it you know yeah. i try and i try and fit a few jokes in but i haven't been doing the whole long things and there's another reason for that too because i was doing the whole long skits i remember for mac weldon i did like a three minute sponsor read that was like three of me arguing about my credit card and buying clothes <laughs> and it was one of the best things i think i've done it was so funny but it didn't end up getting a lot of click throughs and i think it's because the message and the sponsor gets buried in a fun bit Right. And I think I was going too far and you, you're not, you're doing a great mix of like, here is the thing. And there's fun jokes around it. My things became one long joke based around the sponsor. Right. And I realized that I was subtracting away from the message and people weren't actually paying attention. So I went back to the normal way of just a minute and a half of Skillshare as an online learning community. And it works because those saw way more clicks. The honey ads where I'm just like, here is honey. I can see how many people are saving money and, and using my link. And it's like thousands and thousands of dollars as opposed to when I make a whole skit out of it, it's like half of it. So it's a it's a balance that I, you've nailed. But I, I, Well, I've, I've developed somewhat of a formula where it's like uh, it very short skit, ad read, call back to the skit. Mm. That, way they get, it. that way they get their ad read and the viewer gets a little fun thing. And then you can like weave in more of the skit during the ad read, but you know, that's that's basically, that's what I've come to figure you out. You inspire me so much with so much of what you do because the time and the effort and the care is there. You make a video a week and you mm -hmm. really like push that quality content in every way. I try and make a, two videos a week and sometimes I'm lazy, but I, <laughs> Because I try and make more and I have like four sponsors a month, it ends up with me not rushing, but kind of doing the bare minimum to make a quality video. And I, I do wish I could go to that one a week, but then it would be every video I ever make would be sponsored. Yeah. And I feel really weird about that too. That's why I try and push for those extra videos because I want videos that aren't sponsored. I just don't want to become a channel that every video has a sponsor in it. Yeah, that's me now. <laughs> um but, but you be, you work for well, it though. well I, I get a lot of comments that are like i don't even watch this for the content i watch it for the ads now <laughs> i probably like, need to shake weird, that way okay. of thinking because everyone i watch is the same way right they upload mm -hmm. one video a week and it has a sponsor in it well they don't like, i don't think they mean it in a mean way i think they just like this. i think people do uh, some of no, the comments no, that i get sure. are from are from regular viewers that are like mods in my discord and stuff who don't mm. watch the videos too much anymore and don't engage with the content too much. They just really like the ads for some reason. Cause I guess it's like a, they know me and it's like a fun thing and, and they don't really care about the stupid little tiny game boy. If that's true, then you should probably lean into that for your actual videos and start doing skits and the fun yeah. things throughout the video using your content. Because if that You're is right. legitimately true and you have that audience, then you could you could really capitalize on that and bring people to watch the entire video to see what skits you're gonna splice in. So, so, so it did make me realize, like, uh, I sh I need to start putting the amount of effort that I put into the ads into the actual video. <laughs> yeah, probably. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, oh, I need to make a video on this controller, and then it's like, oh, I rush to make the video on the controller, and then I spend another whole day on the ad that's two minutes long when I could have spent, mm -hmm. I should be spending that much time on the entire, you know, video, the actual content that people are there to see. Mm -hmm, for sure so, so i've kind of gone back on that like I've, I'm trying to do like fun things for the actual video just don't spend too much time on any one video because the videos you spend the most time on will usually perform yes. the worst yeah so you, you kind of curse yourself if you do that yes. it, it's... looking at you mario go <laughs> <laughs> Uh so it it's kind of like a thing where you have to just know what is worth spending the time on i'm not talking about the whole video i'm talking about little bits yeah. of the video yeah. know what people are going to notice that you spent time on or yeah. uh, know what's worth it for you to spend time on uh it's like a thing in like illustration like you you when you when you're drawing something you you draw only what's necessary for somebody to perceive that thing as the thing that you're drawing i'm getting really deep now i didn't mean to do this no i get it i 100 percent get it what's um, the worst sponsor you've ever taken and you regret taking I'm really good at saying no to certain sponsorships. Um, I only have I only have one, and the other one I did say no to. Regret taking? Yeah, like at, you look back on it and you're are like, we, oh, are we would... legally allowed to say that? I think there's a statute of limitations there. The one I'm thinking of is like three years gone. 
I don't think they're going to care. Oh, I had one. Wait, what was it? Oh, I had one that was a game uh, yeah. that was coming out for the Switch. Oh. I, I thought it was a different game. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yet. Yeah. I thought it was Spellbound. Okay, what's, what, yeah. What's the battle royale with the with the mystical That's stuff? Spellbound. Yeah, I'm, I no, thought it was no break. I thought it was that, mm -hmm. and it was something else that was like a gotcha game that was a free to play, but forced you to spend money and stuff. Oh, and it I didn't find I didn't realize that it was a different game until the week I had to do the ad, and I asked Paul I was like, can we not do it? I didn't realize this is the wrong, this is a different game, and he goes, you're we're in contract now you have to do it and i was yeah. like no Once you sign, you sign. and i was like how am i gonna do now all my integrity what am i gonna do how am i gonna like <laughs> focus how am i gonna like say this in a way where i'm not telling people it's a great game because it's not yeah and what we ended up doing was um they pushed the the date back somehow and then we just mm. said oh no we can't do that that we, we basically oh. like pushed it back until uh, we went we basically fought with them until and we blamed it on the date. Like, oh, it's not going to work because of the date. Like, they changed you know, something, funny. and we we blamed it on that. And we got out of the contract, and it was freaking awesome. It's funny because I took – a similar thing happened to me, but I managed to get out of it. And one day I want to review these things. I'm just waiting for whatever statute of limitation might be on it to run out. <laughs> but there's this company that made these Switch games, and they sent them to me. I signed the contract. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. It looks fun. It was early in the Switch's life. They sent me the games. I got them. They were awful. They were <laughs> broken. They didn't work. Like the, it was just trash. And they wanted dedicated videos. And so I just flat out said, I'm not doing this. I am not doing this. And then I managed to get out of the contract. And I said to my manager, look, these are so bad. I actually really do want to make a video about them. <laughs> but them being the worst games on the yeah. console, like that's how bad they are. And they were like, no, no, that'd be bad taste. Like they sent you them for free. Like probably should just ignore it. And I'm still there in my closet. I'm actually looking at them right now. And one day I want to review those so bad. But the game I did take was something called, God, should I say it? Because I did, I did do this one. I don't know if you can. You could. You might get sued for then. it. I won't <laughs> then. But it was a mobile game, and I won't say the name. But I thought it was going to be fun, and then we got it. And well, no, it's like I'll a review. I've seen people take sponsorships for uh, for games and then review it. Like like when Duke Nukem Forever came out, IGN. The whole page of IGN was a Duke Nukem Forever ad, and then in the middle was the review, and it said like five out of ten. <laughs> so like. Maybe if you're saying it like a review, you might be able to get away with it. I'm not your lawyer. I'm not. Don't take legal advice from me. Let's change conversation completely because okay. I really want to review the mobile game Spin Jump. Just completely okay. out. <laughs> just, I don't know. Funny feeling. Just this game came just, to mind. I just want to talk about it really quick. It looked really fun. I downloaded it. To be honest, I signed the con. No, nope, no contract. Just a review. <laughs> but I never actually played it until the day just because I kept forgetting to give it a shot. And then I played it and I was like, how am I going to do this? So I got Kim on green screen and we did this whole bit. And 90% of the read was Kim and I on camera doing a bit. And then I showed like 10% of the game. And then at the end, I'm like, download the game today. It's free. <laughs> Can I show it? Uh, sure. Is this it? Yeah, that's the that's the bad boy right there. On the bright side, it's it looks free okay. and there's no there's no microtransactions, but like that is all it is and I had to talk about it for a minute and a half. <laughs> like what do you even say? Yeah. I don't like know. I had to be like there's bricks you can break through and bricks you can't break through and then <laughs> <laughs> whoa. Well, hey, that's, just hey, if to, you think about it, that's all Mario is. It's the kind of thing where like you're when you try and act that excited for something like that, how do people take it seriously when you're like, this hidden gem Switch game is actually really good because I'm the guy that likes Spin Jump. <laughs> it has zero reviews. Probably for the best. <laughs> if, Maybe. Hey, my mom always said, if you had nothing nice to say, <laughs> don't say anything at all. That means probably nobody took the sponsorship. Well, no. It just means nobody. Oh, actually, no, they did come back and say that um no one downloaded it <laughs> and they wanted me to do another and i was like nah <laughs> oh yeah you did do the sponsorship i forgot damn yeah they wanted they wanted me to do a make good i think and i was like nah if no one downloaded your game that's not on me my guy 
I had a company recently tell me, uh, uh, I'll say it, uh, Manscaped. They said uh, oh. they, didn't, they didn't get a lot of uh, click-throughs. And that was on our video together. There was a Manscaped ad. Let's go. Okay. All right. I'm going to complain right here. I love oh, I love mm. the, the Manscaped thing. I, it was freaking awesome. I took it in the bathroom, shaved my balls, and I was like, dude, yeah, this thing's freaking sick. Okay, I'm not going to say what happened specifically because it's Raycon, and I love working <laughs> with Raycon. I love the company, and I love the product, and they sponsor me every month, so they, they pay my mortgage. Really love the company. Great product. I can't say that enough. Ray J, look me in the eyes not, right not now. Spot, not, a, not a sponsor of this channel. <laughs> love you, Ray J. Code beat em ups <laughs> Actually, no, that doesn't work. You have to go to my link. Buyraycon.com. Okay, anyway, the last one I did for them, they tried to not pay me, and it really oh, upset me. Oh, that's not good. I'm... I know. I'm talking every single month for years I've worked with them Did and loved it. Did they approve the ad? So they approved the ad pending one small change. Okay. And they were like, don't worry about showing us the change. Just go live. But the part I changed, I ended up changing it to something else that they weren't okay with. Oh. Uh -huh. But like, you know, when you say like, you're good to go, just go live when you change that and then i change it to something else and then they're like hold on a second nah i'm th i'm sorry also it was for one second of footage yeah one second in a minute and a half read and they were like you have to put that exact ad in your next video and i was like no so i yeah. i compromised and i tweeted for them <laughs> oh but i was yeah you saw that tweet yeah you have to put hashtag ad on that i did oh you did yeah absolutely oh, i did okay okay I didn't, I didn't see the hashtag yet. Oh, God, I'm going to go look at it right now. <laughs> no, I can't be bothered. I know I did. I know okay, I okay. did. I think I buried it in there. I think I put it, like, next to the link or I something so it's all blue. Yeah, I probably wasn't looking. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If I ever tweet something like, I love my Raycons, <laughs> you do, know do, it's probably an app. You can, like, take, you can, like, do the YouTube editor thing and, like, take out, like, a second of footage. Oh, I did. I did. That's oh, what okay. I did. Oh, then I screw actually, them. Yeah. I took it out and, and I was like, it's it's gone. It's taken care of. And that's when they were like, can you at least tweet? And I was like, fine. Because I fine. love them. I do love them. I just, you know, I don't blame whoever was in charge of that decision that day. Yeah, the, a tweet no, is... No, I do blame them. I don't blame the company, though. <laughs> a tweet is not a not a problem. So Sometimes there's, there's sometimes where a company will give me notes on an ad and it's like, this guy's just trying to justify his job. There's no reason for me to have to change all this stuff. Some of these companies will want you to change the most ridiculous of things, and then the next time you work with them, they'll want it the other way, or they want yeah. it changed back. Or, yeah. And it's like, man, I can't keep I, up. I like, will say I almost never get uh, uh, notes to the point where I feel like some of these people aren't watching the ads because I do some crazy shit. I have shit, a story for that. And I feel okay. like they're, 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 they're like, okay, it's good. And it's like, you don't care that I just freaking like, like – rented a lamborghini and like did wheelies in the parking lot you don't care that oh no they probably love that <laughs> here's the story so skillshare another company who i adore skillshare is actually probably i don't want to play favorites but probably my favorite they because never I love give them. me notes ever they never give a note i love them they let me say whatever i want to yeah. say their service their product is really great i'm passionate about it i use it i think it's great but we're at the point where they don't check at all <laughs> even though they're supposed to and i know now because when i was in japan i was uploading videos while i was in japan and i remember i had a skillshare sponsor and something else like it was probably raycon or squarespace or something and the skillshare one was supposed to go live first so i sent off the skillshare one for approval but because i was away on holiday i got confused i messed up i accidentally added the raycon sponsor into the video instead and skillshare approved it they were like yeah everything <laughs> looks great <laughs> <laughs> oh my so then God. I went live and my and the link underneath was like Skillshare, like you know, click Skillshare, but the actual video was Raycon. And I was like, I, I a massive meltdown in the middle of Ikibukuru, Japan, because I was like, do I take this down? What do I do? I don't know. Oh my God. Well, did Raycon approve yeah. it? Because then you just swap them. No, not well. No, no, no. I don't remember what we did actually. I think I think we just took it down and I changed it and re-uploaded it. Ooh. But just the fact that Skillshare approved a Raycon ad. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I, I had a suspicion Skillshare wasn't watching the ads because, you know. If they trust you, they don't care. They're like, eh, yeah. you're good. And you know what? They do. They they perform well for them. So who cares? Yeah. I, well, I, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of them services that speaks for itself. I, I had a little thing. I mean, 
have you have you noticed views going down on YouTube just across the platform? Like not just yourself, mm. but like a lot of people mm. we know are like going through. It's really tough shit. out there. So yeah. and that's why sponsorships are great. But yeah, I I talked to my manager. I have I was a theory like, on that, by the way. But you keep I going. also do, and we'll get into that. I talked to okay. my manager, and I was like, "Hey, uh, you know, we're getting like it seems like the price of ads have gone up a little bit, but my viewership mm. is going down." Yeah, is, I'm is, worried about that too. I was like, "Is this gonna be a problem? I don't want to have. Yeah. I don't want to have the get these people mad." And he goes, "The views don't matter. It's the engagement that matters, and yeah. people are hyper engaged. So everybody's yeah. everybody's really happy. Just keep doing what you're doing." And I was like, okay, "Unless companies so say w they have a view minimum, like they need to get right. this many views on the video, and I don't right. take those because I'm like, I can't guarantee views, like." I can pretty much guarantee over a hundred thousand, but at the same time, I can't guarantee anything with YouTube. It's very weird right now. But the, some companies like um, like Oculus, I did a, I, I I just said I don't do dedicated videos, but I did one for Oculus. I wish I could take an Oculus video. A and that you have it right behind you over your. I love shoulder. I love Oculus. It's freaking awesome, like, dude. <laughs> Oculus, hit me up. What the heck? <laughs> they 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 tiered it. It was a tiered mm -hmm. situation, so. Depending on how many views I got, was oh, how much I money hate I would those. Get. I actually liked I that because they were—it oh, really? was all a decent amount of money. But um, oh. I, I, that way everybody's happy, you know. If if I if I don't uh, like that way, I don't have to be worried about hitting a hundred thousand views or whatever. Views you know? aren't as bad as when they tear click-throughs or purchases because then oh, it yeah. starts to That's feel dumb. like a real conflict of interest. That's and I affiliate stuff. I don't do affiliate stuff. Yeah, because I'm making you an ad. I'm making you a piece yeah. of content, and you're paying to be in front of my audience. So yeah. I'm not doing. That's worth something to 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 me, and it's worth something to you. So like, why yeah. would I take it pro bono for for click throughs? If your product is trash, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's that was my opinion on Spin Jump. I'm like, hey, I made an ad. If people didn't want to play it, that's yeah. not on me. I didn't make the game, but. As far as the views being down, my I have a couple theories, um, but I think the main one right now is TikTok, and I think people aren't taking that into account enough because TikTok has blown up, like yeah. to the point where I I would need to look at traffic sources, but it has to be equal to, if not more than, the amount of views that's going through YouTube now, and those views, that attention, it's being taken away from YouTube, so you're inherently going to have lower views. And I'm pretty lucky that my audience is an older audience. It's actually around my age and a bit more. But of course, there's still quite a lot of young audience there. Um, and those young audience are probably gone right now. They're probably over on TikTok looking at TikTok videos. Um, and another part of that, just the fact that one thing is that people are over there on that platform completely. But now on YouTube, they've started doing YouTube shorts. Yeah. And YouTube's been pushing YouTube shorts like crazy. Like it's actually Kevin made a short for the first time yeah. recently and he got as many, if not more views than what he's been getting lately on other videos. Just because a short is just being like pushed out like crazy right now. He had, a, a, he whole had a weird tab go at, at the it. bottom. He, he, he experimented a lot with it. He uploaded it like four yeah. times in like an hour. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was like, you're not worried about, weird. about notification fatigue or anything. He's like, I don't even care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's I love been, Kevin. He's, yeah, he's been trying to figure stuff out. Um, Do I worked because last time I checked, it was up to like a hundred thousand views on that short. Damn. And that tab they took away, that was the trending tab. I think they've actually taken away for shorts now on their mobile app. And to that find trending, horrible. you have on trending. It was. It was. I'm pretty sure it's trending. And then you have to go up to the top left of the mobile app now to find whatever it was that it replaced. I don't remember. Where trending? I'll was, look too. to be honest. It, it, oh, so I have it was, home it was down the shorts. Yeah, and that's what trending was. Upload a video, subscriptions, and library. Because trending's such a big tab, right? That's not home. Yeah. Home's not trending. Subs isn't trending. I'm telling you, trending was where shorts is. I don't. And now to find trending, you have to go up to that explore tab, and then there's like oh. all of these little extra tabs, oh. and trending's up there now. So that's... they've actually taken away trending, which is insane. And they've just gone shorts because I think they would just rather people watch shorts and get the shorts trending anyway. I never considered any of this. I mean, I knew tr I knew shorts was like a thing. It's a big part of it. This the, YouTube must know that TikTok is taking a lot of views away, and that's why they're yeah, they're, they're absolutely. That's why they're doing. I mean, that's the same thing.
Because YouTube has always pushed these long form videos, right? Because yeah. they always thought in their brains, if we can get people sticking around for these long form videos, it's more time on the platform, it's more ads we can show. But TikTok proved it actually works in the other direction too, if not better, because people don't get bogged down watching one thing, they get bored and click off. It's literally like 30 second video, 10 second video, one minute video. And on TikTok too, if you try and back out because you're bored, it plays the next video before yeah. you, you have to double press it to back out. So then you might get trapped again into watching another video and then you're stuck on the platform on this infinite loop of shorts. And YouTube short does the same thing. It's next video, next video, next video. See, see I have a, uh, I, I, I will watch short YouTube videos, like 10 minutes long, whatever. Um, because I'm like, oh, I don't have a lot of time right now. Let me watch a short video and I'll right. watch a short video and then I'll watch short videos on YouTube for like two hours. <laughs> I'll just get yeah, stuck yeah. in it when I could have sure. just watched a movie. You know, that's why sure. I don't watch like TV shows or movies because I'm like, oh, I don't have 45 minutes. Meanwhile, I'll spend two hours watching dumb YouTube videos. I watch videos nonstop. Yeah, but but uh, I I did notice that my uh, suggested home feed is mostly 30 second to minute long yes. clips of yes. Twitch streams. Mine too. And it's yeah. not, they're not like, technically the youtube shorts they're not like hashtag youtube shorts they're just yep. short videos yeah so you can't escape it you have the whole category of shorts and then yeah. youtube is now pushing shorter videos and mine's the exactly the same it's all but, these 30 second 45 second clips but what's what's terrible is that youtube still prioritizes watch time on the back end to to, yeah. to to us to us creators yeah they say your video is doing bad <laughs> unless it has mm -hmm. a lot of watch time so and they don't yeah. they don't uh th they show you the retention time they show you this video has six minutes of retention time which is uh th 30 seconds less than average for your videos they don't take into account if the video is an hour long or or a minute long so if i post a minute long video They'll say this yeah. video has one minute of retention time, which is yep. which is seven minutes which is less 10 than minutes average. less than what yeah. you normally get. So yeah, so exactly. it'll 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 tell you it's penalizing you, and I yeah. sus I think a lot of people suspect that it's going to penalize you in the algorithm for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it does. This is another classic case of YouTube adding something to the algorithm, shorts and shorter videos, that's fighting everything else the algorithm has learned in the past. Another example is one from a couple years back, which is still a thing. We go by like click-through rates now. That is a huge statistic on YouTube. How many people saw the video, whether it was on your homepage, in the sub feed, somewhere on YouTube and clicked through it, as opposed to clicking to any of the other videos that were on the screen at the time. That was one of the main factors that told YouTube whether or not this video has potential then it goes into watch time once they're in the video and then it goes into time spent on the channel or time spent on the platform because of the video that you clicked through those were the main three but it fought itself in so many ways because the first one is the click-through rate in itself is flawed because every time you click on the video that video gets a boost to the click-through rate and all the other ones that were on the screen they take a hit so if yours are like somewhere in there and someone else got clicked on your video took a hit because that video was chosen first but that algorithm doesn't understand where it is at any given time so if someone goes to your youtube chain pat channel your home page or your youtube channel and they pick one of your videos and amongst all your other videos that one gets a boost and all the other ones take a hit how does that make sense yeah it's 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 completely ridiculous you're fighting against your own content because the I, algorithm gets confused all the time. So, so on the YouTube back end, on, on our little uh, Creator Studio mobile app, and even on, on the yeah. dashboard when you go to it, it says, uh, the, the first thing it says is, your last video performed this badly against your last 10 videos. <laughs> yep. So mm -hmm. YouTube is, is com making you compete against yourself, which, is, which uh, some people like it. Um, I hate it. It's actually killed my motivation and my drive on YouTube. Yeah, it, it's 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 good when it's positive, but it's bad when yeah. it's negative. Because like I was, I've been, I think we've all been doing great the last year, and then because yeah. of COVID, everybody's home, nobody's going out and whatever. It's yeah. winter time, nobody yeah. nobody wants to hang out outside. Uh, then you know that ended, so now things are kind of getting back to normal. But YouTube is telling you, hey, you're fucking up, buddy. 
You got to yeah. you, you used to be doing so much better. Like, how am I supposed to compete against my freaking tenant video that was shared on all these blog sites? How am I supposed to make other videos that are being shared on all these blog sites? Yeah. I can't. Of course that video is going to be one of ten all of the time. And that's confusing as well. Because, like, for example, that video didn't do amazing out the gate, mm -hmm. but it got picked up and then suddenly blew up. But right. while it wasn't doing amazing out the gate, YouTube was telling you, you messed up. You, you made yeah. a bad video. <laughs> this video sucks. Turns out it's actually a great video and people are really interested in it. But because YouTube thought it was a bad video, because the algorithm thought it was a bad video, it was trying to shut it down yes. and tell you it's a bad video. And when it does that, it literally doesn't share it out. It doesn't share it out as much as other videos or other videos it has to share out because the algorithm thinks it's bad. But all those articles being written, it told the algorithm people are coming in, oh, actually, it's really good. Yeah. And that's how videos get hit. It's the same with my, I know I brought it up twice already now, but my go-kart video with Mario Kart is actually a really great video that I feel like could blow up in some instances, but because it's so different from my normal content and because people didn't click on it initially, the algorithm just buried it and didn't, didn't give it a chance to go out to other audiences that might have actually enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's it's the algorithm is like a computer that's trying to figure out if people are going to like this video. And of course, it's, it doesn't mm -hmm. have emotion. It's not going to be like, it's not going to be like, I really think this is an interesting video. No, it's just going by what it thinks is popular. So yeah, blog sites and whatever are an actual person that's like, hey, this is interesting. Let me boost it. So yeah, YouTube has no like person that's except for the trending tab. Mm hmm. Yeah. which i mean it's gone now but yeah, exactly not really but from mobiles <laughs> um and also there's other things that go into play that you have no control over too you know that the algorithm actually looks at the thumbnails as well yes. and it tries to take a snapshot or or an impression of like what the emotion is from the thumbnail which is why Ew. so many youtubers including myself do that big like Oh, I'm happy, happy fun time because YouTube likes sharing out happy feeling videos. The algorithm actually does look for upbeat happiness weirdly in the thumbnail, in the title, in the music, in the tone of the video, in what's being said, it'll read like the caption. And if it has an upbeat tone, they like sharing that because they like to be kid friendly at all times, wherever possible, right? So when I made a video about a zombie VR game, the algorithm, and you can actually go and check it on Google. But the algorithm for thumbnails, it actually did see a zombie in the title, in the thumbnail. And it actually, the algorithm, the AI was like, zombie, scared face, because of my face. Horror was a word that came up. Thriller was a word that came up. So just by the thumbnail, YouTube knew it was a scary video about zombies and didn't share it out as much. Mm. The amount of stuff we fight in the algorithm is insane it's just to very, get a video to do well. It's very stressful. And I do all of that. I know a lot of YouTubers yeah. will do a lot of that stuff in the, like the writing phase or like early on because it's important. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do all of that at the end when, I, oh, it's I like, do all when it's like six in the morning and I, do, mm -hmm. I just finished the video and I want to go to bed. I'm like, oh, tags. Let me just fire a couple out. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's and a lot of people that you know they try getting into YouTube or like smaller channels and they're trying to they make videos like ours or like whatever and then they're like my video is exactly like his why isn't it doing as well it's because you're fighting all of this stuff yeah. that we've been fighting over 700 for me videos and I've learned okay this face works this face doesn't work this color works certain colors in thumbnails work better yeah. than other colors like blues yellows bright colors work better like and it's all that stuff that we do every single day to fight the algorithm. Give me one second, I wanna close this window because as you see, okay. it's gotten brighter and brighter. <laughs> I feel like I've gotten more magenta as it's gone on. There you go, now it looks normal. Your your shirt has just gotten deeper yeah, and I deeper. Yeah, I keep scratching <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> uh, I'm not intending that. I have a theory We're on- We're similar shirts. We actually. are, We're, it's like a mirror. Uh, mm. I, I, have, I have a similar, I have a theory for for newer channels right now. Um, before oh, mm -hmm. you mentioned all this TikTok stuff, which makes perfect sense, my theory for why views have been down uh, is not only the short videos that they're pushing for some stupid reason. Um, yeah. It's COVID happened. We were getting a million. Yeah. We were getting lots of views, um, mm -hmm. and now COVID's winding down. It's nice out. People are leaving the house, and people are yeah. enjoying their lives and not sitting there watching YouTube videos as much. So real what my theory was we were really spoiled by how well we were doing the past year and now mm -hmm. it's getting back to normal 
but mm -hmm. YouTube makes you compete against your own videos. And you, yep. the YouTube algorithm doesn't know that COVID just happened. So right. it thinks, it doesn't, it doesn't think your videos are back to normal now. It thinks you're doing bad and everybody hates you. So we're going yeah. to promote other people's videos. I think right now, new channels probably have a really good shot. So if you're a new YouTuber, mm. fire some stuff out because you have, the algorithm has nothing, has, you have no videos to compare your videos against because you're a brand new channel. Does that it's make a really sense? interesting theory. No, it does make sense. And an example that I have for that is like, you, yeah, you're right. YouTube bases how well a video is going to do based on the channel's past. So you're 100% right. That COVID right. thing could be playing a huge effect um, because we're uploading videos now that aren't doing as well as they were thanks to people not being home. A good example of that is if I upload a video right now that got 30,000 views in the first hour, that's pretty average for me. So it's going to be an average performing video. But if... Uh, someone with a 10,000 sub channel that usually gets like 500 views the first hour, they upload a video and in the first hour, it's like 30,000 views out of nowhere. That tells the algorithm, whatever they just did is a banger yeah. because it's outperforming anything they've done and that'll blow up and it could honestly be like a million, two million, three million view video from there on trending and everything. The the bar of getting on trending is so much lower for smaller channels if they can get that one video that blows up and does really well. So you're right, because 30,000 for me is probably going to die out at like 100,000, 200,000 views. 30,000 for a small channel could be a 5 million view video, even if it's the exact same video. Right. So yeah, yeah. It, you got it, a point. It, it's just... Uh, uh... That's what happened to me, by the way, when I did my Nintendo video, when they dropped me as an ambassador. I got something insane. It was like 100,000 views from my audience in the first mm -hmm. few hours, which is what I get in a day. And I hit trending. I think it was either number one or number two, but it was like right up there on trending. But Damn. someone like Markiplier, PewDiePie, whatever, 100,000 views in the first three hours is a bad video. They're yeah. not going to see trending from that at all. <laughs> yeah. It's all relative. I have never been on trending. I've never seen I've it been on ever. trending three times two times were pretty low down on trending i think 15 was the highest i had hit and then yeah that one do you get me, like, like a notification or, or something when you hit trending at all or do you just just, just people tell you um so yes uh, susan comes to your house and she hands you a little <laughs> <laughs> baked good no um i think i get like a notification on my phone yeah like like someone's uploaded but it will say like your video is on the trending tab oh okay yeah i've never it's, never seen it's that. very nice I know sometimes really nice. it'll it'll like it'll like dip a toe into like number forty on trending and then like leave. Yeah, um, I wish I had been on trending that high for something impressive that I had done, not something <laughs> sad someone else had done to me. And right. I can't remember the other time I was on trending. It oh, it was a Nintendo Direct reaction. So again, oh. it's like I didn't really do something. I reacted to something someone else did. I want to be on trending one time for a video I made that was just like all me in my brain, you know. That's very rough because there's so many other people doing random shit on YouTube. So many other brains. <laughs> yes. Speaking of Nintendo and reactions, are we ever going to get no, to E3? No, screw it. We're not. Okay. Fuck it. Uh, but there is going to be E3 reactions next week. Okay. Uh, are you going to I was do actually your kind of excited e to talk about E3. Oh, we could do it right now. Sure. Why no, not? No, it's fine. We don't have to worry about it. I think Nintendo, Honestly, this, we this week of this video being posted, I think Nintendo is yeah. going to. I think if, if they're going to announce hardware, it's going to be this week, and then next week's going to be E3. So are you a believer? I think that everybody's going a little too hard in the Switch Pro category. Like people think mm -hmm. this is going to be like some 4K powerhouse situation. I think mm -hmm. that it's really just going to be like a very small spec bump and just an iteration of the current Switch that's like sleeker and okay. cooler looking. Um, okay. And I, I think, have theories. I think that that's, I think if we're going to get that, it's happening this week. And if it doesn't happen this week, it's not going to happen till the end of the summer. If Nintendo is going to act like Nintendo has always acted, you are 100% correct, without doubt um it's just that it is possible for them to do more so it's just a matter of if they're going to take that leap like for example 4k powerhouse not going to happen 4k right. possible yeah and i talked about this with my friend um sean but there are nvidia chips now that are the same size and cost the same as the nvidia chip that was in the switch at launch that does artificial ai 4k upscaling dlss which 
something like that. Yeah. But it it bumps it up to 4K upscaling artificially, which tra takes no extra strain on the hardware because it's it's artificial. And that is extremely possible. So something like that could happen. But I do believe that the form factor will be pretty much the same because the Joy-Cons, they're exactly. not going to want to change those at all. So it's going to be the same size. It's just what can they do with that form factor? A bigger screen, hopefully. Better quality screen, hopefully. Better processor, GPU, hopefully. This is uh, on yeah. screen right now is NVIDIA talking about DLSS. Uh, this is their yeah. deep learning something or other subsampling um ba basically it's an algorithm that takes the video and makes it 4k so yeah. i i they yeah they have a chip that just focuses on dlss and i think that that's and it's, they're totally using it plausible. now they, they use it in the shield and the shield yeah. is tiny the shield's like the size of well, the yeah, switch have you ever used uh the marseille adapter the little thing no, that, i have not it's a little thing that makes the switch uh go from 1080p to 1440p and it looks okay. really good. Um, yeah. But telling people the Switch is now 4K is not the same as giving no. them an algorithm that does all the stuff. Like, it's not going to be as good as as people expect. No. Like, like, remember when, when Google Stadia came out and everybody, and it said this is going to be 4K 60 uh, frames per second yeah. over the internet. And it just wasn't for most people. No. What a fail. <laughs> Yeah, that's if, uh, that's if people are expecting for like true 4K from the Switch. I don't know what they're smoking because even yeah. the Series X and the PlayStation 5 are having trouble pumping out 4K on most games. So like so it's that, tough. Like I I have a high-end PC with a 2080 Ti and I can't get Warzone to play in 4K. The Switch I, ain't doing it. I'd be happy if this if this next iteration of the Switch just does a steady 1080 60. I'd be more than happy yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, the only reason I want 4K scaling is, or the AI, is for like when you're playing on your 4K TV, because then it just crisps it all up, it looks nice, it's artificial, yeah, but that doesn't matter, and we're not talking about trying to get like Monster Hunter, what's the big one, World in 4K on my Switch, no, I'm talking about seeing Breath of the Wild on a 4K TV, not actually in 4K, but on a 4K TV without stretching it out from like 1080p or whatever it plays at. I'm not saying that that this is necessarily a bad thing. I, th I think adding this sort of sampling is is a good thing. I just yeah. I'm just worried about the the yeah, perception sure. of people. Yeah. But the thing is, it's possible. But will Nintendo do it? N and I don't know that's because the new thing. 3DS was like nothing. Yeah, that's what I think. So that's the yeah. thing. Nintendo throughout the years has always done like very. They they just do a redesign mm -hmm. basically and maybe give it a little yep. bit of a spec bump that doesn't show in games at all. Um, yep. It just usually helps battery life and stuff and maybe quicker load times. And that's really it. Um, but most of the time, especially for their, for their uh, handhelds, they do a, they do a mid cycle iteration that is just much cooler looking. And I think there yeah. is ways to make the switch cooler looking, but right now we're in this new era where companies like PlayStation and, and, and Xbox, they're, making these mid-cycle iterations that are pretty decent spec bumps like the playstation yeah. 4 and the xbox one yeah got the the pro versions and um that's that was completely unheard of and some websites were saying that i think bloomberg when they broke the news about the switch pro or the latest news about it because they break news every friggin month um in their article they said that uh uh Play companies like Sony and Microsoft saw success in their mid-cycle iterations for the PlayStation yeah. 4 and Xbox Series X. But did they see success? Because they didn't sell that good, but they might not have made that much of them. They might have expected them to not sell that much, but they really mm -hmm. didn't re they weren't that popular. I have no idea what the sales figures are because usually when they tell you the sales figures for console, they do like the blanket. Yeah. Like this is how much Xbox sold. This is how much a PlayStation sold. But it makes a ton of sense. I agree. Nintendo might just do a slim model right. where they sleek it up. But it makes a lot of sense to do these pro models nowadays because games and technology are moving so quickly. The games are moving so quickly. And then the technology is being made so affordable so quickly that it makes sense to revamp your console halfway through because what do we see on like previous generations of consoles by the end of the console life the console was being pushed way too far and it wasn't capable of keeping up with the games that were being made on it but now that's a way of 
strengthening that and extending that. And that's all the Switch has to do, I feel like, is just make it play the games it has better. Yeah. Hyrule Warriors, for example, plays at like 20 FPS. <laughs> like, just yeah. bring out a console that can actually do that a little better, which is what they did on the 3DS, because Hyrule Warriors on the 3DS was poopy schmoopy. And then when they announced the new 3DS, one of the first games they showed off was Hyrule Warriors running at a much better frame rate with more enemies on the screen. I can see history repeating itself there for sure. Yeah, I think that's like the most we're going to get. But I think uh, a lot of the reason why they haven't announced any games recently, like any of the big ones, yeah, like yeah. we've been waiting for Metroid and we've been waiting for Breath of the Wild 2. Oh, we've been waiting for not, all these Not big even games. the ones we know about, but like there's been nothing since Animal Crossing. Right. No new announcements, like right. no, like even little to big. Nintendo has been dead quiet on things we know about, but also things we don't know about. I, I think a lot of the reason is A, they've been backed up since COVID, but B, yep. they have a new hardware and they can't show a lot of the gameplay footage because it's running yeah. on new hardware yep 100 percent. so they've been i, I totally all agree these publishers have been have been holding off um so that's why there's a lot of speculation that they're going to announce the new hardware ahead of e3 yeah and also in their tweet when they announced the e3 they specifically stated that it would be software only which is such a weird yes. thing to specifically state because e3 no, nintendo directs are usually typically software only they're typically only games unless you have hardware to show and the hardware to show is typically new hardware so unless they're trying to say to us don't expect to see any trailers for the switch or the switch Lite, which is a really weird thing to specify to me <laughs> that reads as okay we're talking about software only nintendo so what hardware are we not talking about i, I think this also quells a little bit of the fears that people have that this new hardware that's been rumored People think mm -hmm. that that might be a new generation of console yep. uh, because okay. the Switch is technically last gen, which I think is really stupid. It's in the same generation as the Wii U, which is dumb, and I refuse to. I Wait, refuse to that? subscribe to that. If Nintendo you go to Wikipedia, no. If you go to Wikipedia for console generations, they just lump Switch in with the Wii no. U for some reason. That's that's wrong. It's getting current right. gen games. That's yeah, wrong. I I agree. Um, but <laughs> thank I, you. But uh. I think that them saying ex focus exclusively on Nintendo Switch software and Nintendo Switch is a hashtag. This yeah. proves that whatever this new, if we're getting a new console uh, iteration, it's an iteration and it's going to play the same games as the old console. And if you have a Switch right now, you'll still be able to play the same games. Yeah, I'll, I didn't even read into it that way, but you're right. That That's definitely a... Yeah, that could be the case. It's exclusively Nintendo Switch, this platform, this generation software. So don't worry, we're not bringing out a new next-gen console with games exclusively for that. It's exclusively this console. I actually love the way you've read into that because I was worried when I first saw that that uh, maybe we'd be seeing some games that were only playable on this new yeah. Nintendo that you couldn't play on the old Nintendo, but your way of looking at it is much better. Also, if I, I, a point I made is if people are reading this like, oh, it's them just trying to say, no, this isn't happening. It's software only. Don't get your hopes up. Hardware, new hardware. We've heard the rumors. We're shutting them down. If the rumors are that strong, that vocal, if people are that excited for possible new hardware that Nintendo have to publicly say it's only going to be software, don't you feel like Nintendo was just admitting that they're missing out on an opportunity at that <laughs> yeah. point? Like, there's <laughs> obviously money here if you have to keep shutting down the idea that it's going to happen. I, I don't have an example, but I'm pretty sure I've seen Nintendo word things similar to this if they're mm -hmm. worried about the public getting their mm -hmm. hopes up about the wrong they thing. They did it with, Reggie did it with 3DS, I think. There was something Reggie did at one point where he said, we're not bringing out a new 3DS, we're not blah, 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 not working on new hardware. And then like a week later, it was announced. So so I, I, I'm pretty sure when they do announcements like this, they pretty much try to like get everybody's expectations. Yeah. At a, but they know that everybody's expectations yeah. are way overboard Dude, all go of the to that, time. Go to that Nintendo account because they know everything. They are meme lords, my guy. The day that they were supposed to announce the Switch, uh, supposedly on Thursday, oh. <laughs> rather than tweeting out an announcement, they tweeted out that guy. That was their tweet on Thursday. You're telling Machi, me they didn't do the that Kiwi. on purpose. Who is this? I actually don't know. I don't know what that's from. Imagine, but it's just, it's, um, imagine that's it. It's just oh, that. it's from Zelda. 
Oh, it's from Skyward Sword. We probably should have known that. I probably should have known I that. I don't. I, I, I have an out. I barely remember Skyward Sword. I played it one time. I thought it was fine. Um, but that's so obvious them, <laughs> them memeing on us. Spawn Wave. Finally, finally the <laughs> NX. <laughs> Dude, Spawn Wave always comments on this stuff and gets a ton of likes. Yeah. It annoys me. He's too funny. Uh, so he, can't many... be, he can't be this smart, hot, and <laughs> funny. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so many people like quote tweeted the announcement for the E3, and uh, every and in, every quote tweet was like sick, dude, and it got like sick. thousands of likes. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I know. It's ridiculous. People are hype for for for. I mean, we haven't seen a new software at all, no. and there's, there's also a possibility that um, they still don't announce anything. Like they still don't. Oh announce, yeah, that's like, Nintendo. That's probably a yeah. very high possibility. I, I do think we'll see hardware before the Direct, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't because it's Nintendo. But I do think either way, I have pretty high hopes and pretty good feeling that this Direct will be pretty jam-packed because all the Directs recently have been pretty lackluster. They've mm. been pretty secret about a lot of stuff. This is E3 and they're coming with 40 minutes. If they drop the ball again, I don't know. I feel like they have something planned. And it's one of them things where you can't even predict it because they have been so quiet. Will yeah. we see Me Metroid Bayonetta? Who knows? Will we see brand new announcements? I don't know. That I don't. I can't expect anything because they've been so quiet for so long. We need at least one. We need at least one of the things that they've talked about already, like Metroid Bayonetta or Breath of the Wild Two. We need at least. I think a, a, we need Bayonetta. at least an extra second of of something. Bayonetta is going to be the most likely, unless something insane happened at Metroid where all of a sudden they started figuring out the nuts and bolts and they were like, this is coming together out of nowhere. Because that only restarted about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, I, I, I so think, I think Bayonetta is way more likely. I think we might get like another sort of, like the Bayonetta trailer that we got was just like her feet. I think we might get yeah. something weird like that for Metroid because the only thing we had was a title screen. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah, actually, that's possible. We could see sort of like a little cinematic that maybe gives a hint in the direction the game is going. Right. But I think Bayonetta had been started when they announced it and then they switched over to Astral Chain right. and they might have gone back to it. So I feel like there's definitely something there to show. And then we could, I, I fully expect to see like one thing come back from Nintendo, whether it's like a finally Pikmin 4 finally an f-zero game that's probably not going to happen but something <laughs> along the lines of that i think yeah. we'll see something um Maybe they're running out of wii u game support they, they they usually do a yeah. new ip that everybody's like what the hell is this and then it ends up doing amazing for sure i could see uh Bay bayonetta 3 not bayonetta 3 splatoon 3 mm -hmm. obviously we're going to see more of that um and then the pokemon games I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of the Pokemon games. Maybe not the Arceus one or whatever that is, because that looked like it was in early, early stages. But I'll, uh, I'll never forget. I went to E3 uh, the year that Splatoon was announced, mm -hmm. and uh, they always do their they always do their announcement the morning before the show floor opens. Mm -hmm. So they do their their uh, booth. They do it up for whatever they're announcing. So nobody knows what they're going to announce unless you are somehow like working at E3 or something. And the year that they announced Splatoon, it was a new IP. Nobody knew anything about it. And the whole booth was decked out with Splatoon. So it was like, this is the game. This is it. This is what they're doubling down on. And I was like, this is freaking stupid. And then it ended up being an amazing game that everybody It is really good. Bought. I'm I mean, excited I don't, for the I don't new like one. It that much, but still. <laughs> I don't like it that much either. I was lying. The, the new one... I hope I hope that they do some single player stuff because the last one they did some single like player have, stuff and like it didn't it really a, capture me. It looks like it has sort of like a story mode mm -hmm. by the look of it. I think it's a missed opportunity if they don't because that trailer was pretty hype. She was sat on the train with like a little fish friend. I want that story. Yeah, it looks awesome. It's like post apocalyptic. It looks freaking sick. Um, but yeah, I think that's Nintendo. Nintendo is a mystery. I think new hardware is happening. Um, I also talked to someone else who makes things for switch and they think that it's happening too um which is a pretty reliable source yes. for me um so i do think it's happening i don't know when it's going to happen and then the direct i think it's just going to be a big mystery i'm hoping it's either going to be boring and lame or like the coolest thing we've ever seen and as far as all the other companies it's really hard to do predictions at this point because we're coming out of covid 
So it could be exactly what we want it all to be, or it could be literally lackluster and just, hey, COVID. I mean, like God of War, for example, has been pushed back. Not that anyone expected that to be this year, but that's been pushed back. And I just, yeah, it's hard to predict anything when the world was in such chaos six months ago. I think Microsoft needs some games because they have like 25 studios and they have like nothing announced that's like exclusive for for Xbox. And they bought those studios like three years ago at this point. Hmm. So I, there's no excuse. I feel like they're not focused on exclusives, but they probably have some in their back pocket. I think Game Pass will get slogged with a bunch of new games. Some will actually be good. There'll be some like big title surprises. Um, other than that, I, I never expect anything from Xbox anymore. Once they get rolling, I think it's going to be fire. But I have no idea how long it's going to take them to start getting their, their feet out of the door with right, that, with right, games like Fable. Right now, the biggest uh, draw to Xbox is just because the the the, the user experience is great. And, yeah. and uh, the Game Pass Game is, is freaking awesome. Game Pass is fantastic. But also, if you have both... I buy a lot of games on Xbox, most of my games on Xbox, because it is, I know the, the hardware is comparable, but it is managing to pull off such crazy things. Like Mass Effect Trilogy, it's 120 FPS on the Series X. It's not on even on PC, and it's not on PlayStation. <laughs> They're both 60 FPS. That's pretty A ridiculous. lot of games coming out on Xbox are actually getting like these huge numbers and big boosts for their specs, and I think that's cool, but it's all third-party stuff, of course. I, I, I do get, love Game Pass, though. I get all my third-party stuff on on Xbox, uh, but I, it's mostly mm. because I just like the user experience on Xbox more than on PlayStation. PlayStation's got all this I weird think, stuff that pisses me off. Yeah, for sure. Trying to turn off the PlayStation is a nightmare. I, I never find the off. I know. I have to remember every time that it's like different. Now. I know. It's frustrating. But but there's also all, there's, another thing that's good about Xbox is I can play three games at once and switch between them. When Returnal ooh. came out, my PlayStation Five became a Returnal machine for two weeks, and I wasn't able to play anything else. I don't like that game because of that. I, I beat it and I did like it, but it had so many flaws, and I'm so mad at that game for messing up such easy things to fix. Yeah, it's a it's the save user the save issue. thing still does <laughs> the save thing still does my head in. It does. I know there's a lot of elitists that think that that's like the only way it could be. <laughs> it doesn't make sense because yeah. Hades is like it has save. People think when I say saves that I that's the, the, that in you, their brain that's checkpoints. Like, yeah, checkpoints. But it's not like a checkpoint you can go back to. And again, exactly. no matter how you try and explain it, people are like, well, the whole point of the game is you die and you're dead. I'm like, yeah, that's still what happens. <laughs> but if your console dies or you yeah. want to stop playing, you can just pick up where you left off. If it's, you it, die, you're still dead. It's not about the game being hard. It's about convenience. If people are leaving yes. their PlayStations on to, to and, yes. and, and that's the only way to play the game, that's a flaw in the game. Make the game harder. I don't care. Checkpoints do not change the difficulty at all because you don't go back to them when you die. It's just you can restart right there if you have to turn the console off or stop playing for some reason. It's the same with Hades. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not... I think someone explained that that's how I've never played Majora's Mask, but isn't that how Majora's Mask works, where you get a save file that deletes itself when you start the game up again? I Do don't I remember. It's been a while. I so, don't know. So my, I mean, what I think they should have done with Returnal was, because uh, they're worried about people exploiting the save point, which makes sense. But um, but how would you exploit that? Because you can't exploit it in other games. Well, you would just go back to that save point if you die. But, but why, how? Well, like if you so so the idea would be to make it so that the save point deletes itself when you load it back up again. That way, if you create a new save point, it's where you're at, and so you can't you can't just keep making save points. You know, like a but save point not... equals a checkpoint in some games, but in this game, it should delete itself when you boot it back up again, so that it's a linear path. You can't go back to the save point ever. Yeah, but that's Hades. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. Like the right. the checkpoint never solely Hades. exists. Okay, so here's how it works, right? Mm -hmm. The game is, let's say the game is linear how it is now, right? Mm -hmm. You're playing along, you're playing along, you die, you go back to the start. Simple, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the runs are like two or three hours long. So if your console cuts out halfway, then 
it's almost like you die and you have to go back to the start again. But that's kind of, that's not my fault. I didn't die. <laughs> the difficulty didn't kill me. The console killed me. Right. But if you have checkpoints every time you walk into a room, it just makes it so if anything happens, like you you disconnect or the console turns off or you're, you know, you're in rest mode and it updates, then you just start back at that room. You just start back right in that room that you were in anyway. If you die, it still immediately sends you back. Not back to the checkpoint, back to the start. So there's no difference. If I put my controller down midway and come back five hours later to my checkpoint, it's still the same game that's just as hard as it was before. Right. Yeah, and you so made how it could they, to that how can point. You, and yeah. how can you manipulate that? The only way I can see manipulating that is if when you die, you quickly turn the console off and then you try and get back to the checkpoint exactly. that you hit. Yeah. But I or mean, you, you load have to make the it so... save. Yeah, you, you, can't, you, can't, you have to make it so you can't load the save yeah, if you're you upset load. about your progress. There's no loading. I didn't right. say load. It's, it's not a save file. I wouldn't even call it a checkpoint. It's just like a, a, a state yeah. that captures a screenshot of you in case you need to stop playing and you want to come back to it later. But you that, can't save it. That's what ruined Returnal for me. I played for like three hours and, I, and I, yes. I, it took me three hours to beat apparently a mini boss. I was told if you beat the boss, you go to the next biome. And I was, mm -hmm. I was struggling to beat this mini boss. I beat the mini boss. and I was like, all right, I'm going back to the ship. Now what do I do? And chat's like, you got to beat the main boss. And I was like, that wasn't the main boss? I was like, no. And I was like, so there's no save? That's it? And they're like, no, there's no save. I was like, what if I just do this? And I turned the game off and I'm like, I'm never playing this fucking game again. Because <laughs> Which I was just, boss did you beat? The mini boss of the, the first mini boss. Like uh, this gorilla looking guy. He's all red. Gorilla looking guy? Yeah. It took me three hours. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know. But I, 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 I was just done playing. I'm not leaving right, no, my I PlayStation on. I'd spent three hours. I'm done playing the game. I want to go to bed. Mm -hmm. You know, I should be able to just pause basically and then pick it back up where yeah. I left off. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. You should have been able to turn the console on tomorrow and started right there. It's 2021. We've had save states since, uh, I don't know. Eight, I agree. 1985. I agree. So. It doesn't affect the difficulty at all. By the way, I beat the game. So I'm not just talking. <laughs> I'm not like salty that like I couldn't beat it. It was too hard. I beat it. It was actually kind of easy in the end, which was funny. It was like a huge slog, a huge struggle uh, playing through. I had like 50 deaths. No, it was more like 30. But then I had one run where I just picked up every amazing item, every amazing gun, and I blitzed it and I beat the final boss the first time. So I, I, just I get lucky. the gameplay was fun. It's a fun game. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's, it's yeah. ruined by its bad user experience. Yes, 100%. Um, and that's uh, that's another reason why I don't like roguelikes. Uh, that well, I, uh, some roguelikes are great, but like I, I, it's not a genre for me. A lot of times, you're just hoping for the RNG of getting the good shit. You know? Yeah, I do think you'd like Hades. Hades nailed it. It's just I, the perfect I I user experience. I think I would yeah. too. Try it. I made a really good video about Hades. Oh, good. Did you watch it? Nope. <laughs> I died a lot in the video. Oh God. Yeah. You get it? I don't get it. Well, you die and you try again, you die and you try again. You know, in the game, you can't beat hell. You keep dying. Yeah. So in my video, the video keeps restarting and I keep oh, dying in different ways. Oh, you didn't say it right. You should have said you restarted the video a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. the whole point, I was trapped in a death loop in my video. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. I filmed like 50 different deaths for the video. It was a nightmare. The reason we brought up Returnal in the first place was because uh, it's, the, it's like the only PlayStation 5 exclusive. <laughs> I know. Well, Ratchet and Clank comes out in seven days. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm very excited. That game looks great. I have never played a Ratchet and Clank game before. It sounds like I don't play games. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank's really the last one was really good. This one looks. This really one good. looks phenomenal. Yeah. yeah maybe. And I will then play it. five days after that, Skyward Sword comes out. I'm not gonna play that. What? Yeah, I'm not. You play don't play it. games. I I kind of you play wanna... Mario Maker two every yes, night. I'm gonna play it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to play through Ocarina of Time for the first time. I My don't... plan when when Skyward Sword comes out, because it's the first game chronologically in mm -hmm. the Zelda franchise series. My plan is to play through every single game start to finish on Twitch once that game comes out. Holy shit! Not counting the spinoff games or like the the handheld games. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I, I know I will get some views on Twitch if I play that game, but I just really like I don't want to play it. <laughs> you should play it. We'll play it at the same time, and the people will get confused, and they won't know who's who. That's true. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any other E3 predictions? 
I think we no. pretty much went ran through. I just everything. wanted to talk about Nintendo. I really don't care about other like I get excited for the other systems and consoles, but I know they're going to do a good job, and I look forward to hearing about them. Nintendo is the one I stress out about. I mean, that's most of our viewers are here for that anyway. Well, yeah, true. No one cares about. What do you think Stadia is going to do? <laughs> I think they're going to close. <laughs> yeah, gonna I think they are. They're done. I I think they already closed down the the two development studios they had. I think it what was a, a fail. I think it was a great idea, and yeah. that. I think it was a great idea that Microsoft is nailing. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great idea, and as much as people are resentful for it, it's it's definitely a future of gaming. I don't know about yeah. the future, but it is a future, and I could see it being the future. I think people are going to be surprised. Once streaming games becomes almost flawless, if not flawless, then we already lean so much into digital when it comes to games. You yourself by most if not all your switch games digital right. so if you could get that experience streaming like a game pass service where it's pretty cheap and you can play all you love game pass you love digital it's those things merged and there's a huge audience for that it's just not there yet i think if i was 17 working at target you know a minimum wage yeah. job and they announce a new game like cyberpunk i want to play cyberpunk i don't have a new console to play it on and it runs like trash on old consoles so what yeah. do I do? I don't want to spend five hundred and sixty dollars, five hundred and seventy dollars yeah. plus tax on a console just to play Cyberpunk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a Chrome browser, pay seventy bucks, and at, at that point it became free with Stadia, and I'm gonna load yeah. up Stadia and it's gonna run great. Yeah. And I think people are insane if they think that it's not a future of gaming or that it isn't gonna become viable. I think you're just dumb dumb brain because <laughs> like our generation, for example, we grew up with physical media music, right? For a, a, until yeah. we were probably around like 15, 16, 17, and then we what started getting iPad, not iPads, um, iPods and MP3 players, and suddenly our music became digital. And then as soon as we could, we switched over to streaming music. And now Spotify is all I use for music, and why would I ever buy music? But people older than us are probably still buying vinyls and CDs and whatever and because they think physical media is the way to go. It's going to be the same thing. These 17, 18-year-olds, they're not going to know any different. They're not going to know the experience of walking into a brick-and-mortar store and buying a video game. They're not going to care how they play their games. If it runs great and plays well, they'll stream it. And eventually, we're going to be dead, or at least really old, and that's going to be the way people are playing games. And the thought of going out and buying a console for like $600 and then buying physical games all the time is going to be ludicrous. Like if I was to go out right now, if, I, if right now I was like, man, I really want to listen to some Michael Jackson. I'm going to go out and buy a, a vinyl record player and Michael Jackson's bad on vinyl so I can listen to a couple of tracks. Like, no, I'm just going to load up those streaming services and play a song real quick. There were a lot of uh, physical media elitists when everything was moving to digital. Um, yeah. Like it sounds better They're on a CD lobby. and everything, but it just became more convenient to have all of your stuff on one device. Yeah, and eventually games are going to be more convenient. Think yeah. about how many games are getting made these days. I don't have time to buy them all or play them all. And eventually being able to stream them and try one out real quickly and see if I like it or not via streaming before I buy it or if I buy it or on a subscription service... Yeah, it's just, you got to be dumb, dumb brain if you think that ain't going to be the future. And and the same thing happened with movies, uh, with Netflix and stuff. Yep. So so mm -hmm. I, I think having a service that just, it's a monthly fee that gives you all of the games, like, like yeah. that's, that's yeah. pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. and, and with Game Pass, uh, this is now a Game Pass ad, uh, you don't <laughs> even have to stream it you can just have it on the console if you have a powerful enough console. And that's why they have two consoles. They, 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 um, they have the white one, the the, the cheapo one, uh, mm. and they that's less powerful. And they got the big boy that uh, for people who uh, want to have all of their games on their console and don't want to uh, have it uh, streamed. Yeah. And in some cases, people already are like digital only, you know, not streaming just yet. But like my Oculus, for example, I love that thing. But every game I buy, of course, it has to be digital. There's no like card yeah. slot or disc. That's a digital only system. And VR is doing pretty well for itself. And all VR games are digital. It's exponentially more convenient to download it straight yeah. to that console because you don't have any wires. Yeah. It's just on your face. Exactly. Yeah. We're going in that direction. It's just a matter of time. Games are taking longer because they cost so much to make, um, but it'll get cheaper. Things will come down in price. Digital is the future, and then streaming will eventually be the future too. 
in a hundred years by now, in a hundred years from now, everything will be streaming, no question. It's just right. a matter of how long it's going to take to get there. I think you're hundred percent right. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm not saying that I love that either. I prefer, <laughs> I look at my Switch collection. I still buy every game. I have Man Eater Digital on my Game Pass on my Game Pass on Xbox. I started it yesterday. And yet I still bought it because I wanted to own it. So I'm not like saying this is what I want to happen. It's just what's gonna happen. There was a weird thing that happened where uh uh people started buying more vinyls just because they look nicer to collect. <laughs> yeah. That'll still that will always be a thing yeah. for sure. Yeah, and that happens with music. That happens with movies. That happen. That will happen with games. People will hold out, uh, but eventually, I mean, collectors editions will always, you know, be a thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there'll be physical media as long as there's demand for it. As long as you watching this right home want it, then there will be other people that want it, and there'll be enough people that'll make it happen. But it, I'm just saying, eventually, it's not going to be the norm, and eventually, eventually, people aren't even going to want it anymore. We've been uh, doing this for an hour and a half. We were supposed to I know, I gotta hour. pee really bad. I gotta pee too. Uh, mm. We can stop? Let's stop. Mm, sure. I, I wanna, yeah, okay. We've been, I've been having a great time. But we also, yeah, got, are we doing something else for your channel? Oh God, no, I'm not set up for that. Oh, I no, I was gonna say, something. like, I've, I, I've mentioned it to you recently, but I thought you and I doing a podcast would be a good idea. I just don't wanna commit to that because I already regret having my podcast every I, week. Oh, I hate committing to things. <laughs> I know. I hate committing to things. And my podcast already takes away so much time from my other content. But in a perfect world, I think you and I having a podcast mm -hmm. is a phenomenal idea and would do arguably a lot better than some of our other adventures. I don't want yes. to put anyone else no, on I blast. I, but... I agree. Leave it in the comments if you'd like to see us do more podcasts like this together in some capacity. Yeah. And also, comment section, thank you for having me. I really appreciate oh, being here. Thank you for being I, here. I felt... I felt really comfortable here and I just blast and over talked you and everything and like you're the host my first time here I don't and I think didn't you care did. but that's only because I was having a great time and we talk all the time and it just felt kind of natural to me that's this what was I any that's, other person's podcast <laughs> that's why we went the route of talking about sponsorships because I really just wanted to uh, yeah I, I like just talking shop and talking about this is all I do well and I'm sure you're the same all, all we do is YouTube and make videos and video games yeah. and whatnot so yeah. if somebody wants to talk to me about the fucking weather or something I can't I can't relate <laughs> that's why my podcast is not about gaming and I know that's a detriment to the podcast right. but I just want somewhere where I don't talk about video games for a while you know I, I, and I if think people and I, I think that I do more video work than I do play video games <laughs> Oh, 100%. There's so, no time for games. So that's why I like talking about YouTube and talking about, uh, you know, behind the yeah. scenes stuff. Yeah, for sure. And if people like me here and they want me back, I'll come back whenever you want. Oh, and then you. if I keep coming back to the point where I'm just here all the time, maybe we should look at making the Coffee Coffee Boys podcast. Well, well, number one problem is you do your fucking podcast the same exact time we do our podcast. Number, I'm two changing the Sundays. Oh, well, then, then why are we even doing this? <laughs> Because I'm doing the, the, I'm not done it yet. It's the okay. next one after the next one. Well, that's good, Ben. Then you can be on the podcast. There you okay. Go. I well, what about you? Don't not you, all you the time, him? but like you know. Oh, you okay. Can, but, but if you wanted, so here's the thing. Our biggest. This is the easiest thing in the world to do. We just freaking hit record and we're we're ready because we're both set up for shit like this. Um, yeah. The the hardest thing is getting us both together at the same time. Yeah, uh, I can make it work. I just like saying no. I hate committing. <laughs> I also hate committing. That's just why it's hard you, to get us together. But we're also both very busy. the day before. Yeah, I know. We suck. Um, yeah. But if it, if it, the day before, I'm the kind of guy where like, if you hit me in the moment and you're like, how about now? And I'm free. I'm like, yes. Oh, but I'm if you opposite. do it a week beforehand and you're like, can I do it like next, like two weeks from now at 2 p.m. I'll be like, I have no idea what I'm doing that day. I'm and you the... could argue, well, you would be doing this if you said yes to this, but I'm like, no, I could be doing anything that day. <laughs> I'm the complete opposite. I, if wow. you tell me, can you do this right now? I'm like, I'm like laying down on the couch. I'm like, absolutely not, I'm not moving. <laughs> but if you tell me, uh, or I'm like working on something, you know, but if you, if, right. if you tell me tomorrow at 2 p.m. we're doing this thing, I'll be like, okay, I'll make it work. That is the perfect scenario. Okay, I will. I will. That's exactly what we you. just did. We were yes, like, yeah. we're like, let's if do it tomorrow before, at, at five. And yep. we're like, all right, let's yeah. do it. Because I can mentally prep. I can go to bed knowing I got to get up. I got to be ready. <laughs> I can do. I, I legit last night, I was like, I'll work out at 2 p.m. I'll be done by three. I'll podcast at four. That's exactly what I did. And it's a great day. So we will do this again in some capacity. I mean, 
Okay. Well, I, I, I want to have you on the actual podcast, but um, this isn't uh, the actual. Okay. It is, but it's like a weird one-off where like uh, I'm, it's not live, and uh, I'm away. Oh. I'm, I'm currently having a great time losing all my money in Vegas right now. Um, okay. But anyway, thanks for stream it. I might. Oh no! Yes, 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 yes. If we do like an actual, yeah, I don't, I don't know what your brain just did. Yes. Anyway, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash Wolfden for the next Wolfden podcast at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Twitch. And uh, you all know Wood already. I don't have to shill his stuff. The only thing that I would shill is my podcast if you want to hear my podcast. Yes. What is the I'd YouTube channel it. for that? Uh, it's the Wood and Eric YouTube channel, or you can go to woodandericshow.com and you can find links to iTunes, Spotify. It's a whole thing. It's legit. It's legit. It's legit. This ain't some shady backwater <laughs> operation. Anyway, thank you for being here, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time for the real deal. Goodbye. Bye.